take a look at the Seattle Seahawks and a betting preview for the team way up in the northwest corner. Last season, the Hawks were 7-10, and 10, fourth in the NFC West, 9-8 and eight against the spread, and a 6-10-1 and one over under record. I think the biggest question mark here is at quarterback. I think there were rumors that maybe they were going to get Jimmy Garoppolo. Here's where I'm going to start. Do you think okay. if the Seahawks get Jimmy G that these odds will even shift? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Because he is an upgrade. No matter how you feel about Jimmy G, he is a significant upgrade over Geno Smith and over Drew Locke. Now, I'm not saying this is like Tom Brady coming in, not at all, but they will shorten. I just don't think they'll shorten that much. But when you are getting an upgrade at the most significant position, the most impactful position on the field, then the odds will reflect that. It won't be much. It'll be something. The problem is, Chelsea, because I thought about this too, and it looked like the Seahawks were going to go out and get somebody. If you're the Niners, do you really want to trade him within the division, even if it's the worst team in the division? I think if you are that confident in your rookie quarterback and Trey Lance, yeah, it doesn't matter. But for me, if you are playing the Seahawks, timing is one of the most important things when you are playing the futures market. If you do believe that the Seahawks are going to get Jimmy Garoppolo and you're still a seller on the Seahawks team, then you play the win total under because right now the win total set at five and a half, the over juice to minus 140. Don't we think maybe we will see some movement in that? if Jimmy G goes to Seattle. But here's the question I have. Jimmy Garoppolo, I think, is a fine, decent game manager. But what if he's not on a good team? Because look at the 49ers. It seems like you can just plug and play whoever at quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo is still throwing multiple interceptions in the postseason, and the Niners still find ways to win because their defense is so good, because Debo Samuel is so good. But what happens when he's on a team that is a bottom five defense, a bottom five offense, that doesn't have a ton of weapons. Well, that is a very good point. I still believe, however, he can elevate a team more so than a Geno Smith. Because here's the thing. I understand the Niners certainly are a better overall team. But when you look at the weapons in Seattle, they actually have very good weapons. They have DJ Metcalf. They have Tyler Lockett. Noah Fant is a good tight end that they got in that trade when they sent Russell Wilson to Denver. So they do have offensive weapons that you can take advantage of. You just need someone to get them the football. Jimmy G can do that. So he will be an upgrade if they happen to make that move, more so than Geno Smith or Drew Locke. If I would worry more if the Seahawks didn't have many weapons. Like we were talking about the Falcons earlier. And yes, they have Kyle Pitts, but he's only played one season in the National Football League. So he, he certainly has a lot of potential. I think he's going to be a stud. And then you have Drake London, who is, they're hoping he's going to be the guy out of USC, but didn't play a full year last year in college football. So he'll have sort of a long runway before he can catch up. You already have two proven guys on your on your roster at receiver in Lockett and Metcalf. So in that situation, if you have a quarterback who can throw to those guys, you can be successful. That's why I think we would see these odds shorten a little bit if Jimmy G were to be in that Seattle offense. I think this offense will work with those pieces if whichever quarterback they get, if it's Jimmy Garoppolo, can throw the deep ball because that is the one saving grace that the Seahawks had last season. They would have this terrible offense, but occasionally Russell Wilson would connect with DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett for this huge, huge gain, and it would get the Seahawks back in it. But other than that, their offense was terrible to watch. But it is far from a guarantee that Jimmy Garoppolo is joining this team. So as of now, it's Geno Smith, Drew Locke, and Jacob Eason in the quarterback room. So, Jenks, let's take a look at some of these bets. To win the division, okay. they're 16-1. to To win the NFC, they're 66-1. to To make the playoffs, the no is minus 650, yes, plus 450. We said the win total, 5.5, juice to the over at minus 140. Is there anything on here that you would want to put some money on? I don't think so. Although, I might put... I did. There was a fleeting thought that I had this morning. I thought, you know what? Put down minus 650 on no. They're not going to make the playoffs. And I thought, Michael, that is so dumb. Do not do that. You know better. Move on. I might put something on under five and a half wins just because I don't believe in the Seahawks. And yes, I know it's way juice to the over. I, it, it's probably the right side. But if I'm looking at plus money, a good team to fade might be Seattle at plus 120 because maybe you make something there. But there's not a whole lot on the board here to like, at least value wise, when it comes to Seattle. 
Right. I think the only lean I would have is the win total under five and a half because at least you're getting some plus money. And looking at the Seahawks schedule, they have one of the tougher ones, the 11th toughest schedule in the NFL. They do play in a very tough division that is the NFC West. And also think about the travel. I know it's the same every year, but they are tucked away in such a far corner of the U.S. that if you have a tough schedule and also you have a tough travel schedule, it's a Mm -hmm. lot of travel and a lot to take for a team that already kind of has the chips stacked against them. Uh, Some other interesting bets to start the season. 0-4 is 5-1, to and I think it's because they are playing Atlanta the third game of the season. (laughs) Other than that, they are hosting Denver the first game of the season, which should be an interesting one, with Russell Wilson starting at quarterback for the Broncos. At San Francisco, they host Atlanta, and then they're at Detroit, which I'm not sure if is a win. I'm not sure if the Lions are, you know, an easy W in the win column for most of these teams this year. I was thinking that as well. I was looking at this team to start 0-4 at 5-1. to Maybe that's your bet. The sabotage is that they do host the Falcons, and the Falcons suck. But Denver, that's that's a loss. At San Francisco, loss. Atlanta, okay. They could probably win that game. They go to Detroit. I think the Lions win that game. So if somehow they get upset by the Falcons, it cashes at 5-1. to That might actually be my favorite bet on the board because I'm not a believer in the Seahawks team at all, Chelsea. Or if you think the Falcons are bad too, I'm wondering what the odds are on the Falcons to start the season 0-4, because you could put money on both of those bets and be covered in both scenarios. You know, if the Falcons win that head-to-head matchup with the Seahawks, or if the Seahawks win, because other than that, I don't see the Seahawks winning any of these games. I don't either. And the thing about the Seahawks, which is so fascinating to me, is that, They have been for a long time now such a run-heavy offense, and they have talent. They have Rashad Penny and Chris Carson. They drafted Kenneth Walker III out of Michigan State, who's a hell of a running back. And and you can focus and be a run-first team, but to be a run-heavy team in the National Football League, it just doesn't play. You have to be a passing first team or a team that thinks about the past. That's just where we are in the National Football League. And this is one of the reasons why Russell Wilson stalled out in Seattle because they weren't helping him out. And they were essentially trying to run the ball first, giving the ball to Russ and saying, okay, Russ, just go win it for us. But they've got to evolve offensively. And it looks like for now, they're not going to try and do that. Bottom line, if they were a bad team with Russell Wilson, do you think that they're going to be a good team Without Russell Wilson, (laughs) with Geno Smith, listen, this might be a team that I'm willing to bet on against the spread if they're getting, you know, over a touchdown. Because I will say in that regard, Geno Smith was very good as a backup quarterback covering numbers. But, like, what's the silver lining here? Maybe the fact that their running back room was very injured last season and they didn't have a ton of weapons. That's the only thing I can think of. I I think the only silver lining is that – you received a lot in that Russell Wilson trade. So maybe you have a lot of equity. They got two first-round picks, two second-round picks, a fifth-round pick. They got Noah Fant, who's a good player, and then Shelby Harris, a defensive end, and Drew Locke. So at the very least, they got something in return for Russ because Russ wasn't happy there. So maybe they can build towards the future. Outside of that, not a lot to be excited about. Also, will the home field advantage still be there? Do you think, what is it, the 12th or 13th man? will still be as loud when they don't have things to root for? I don't know. We'll see. Coming up.